and greetings friends. Today I want to talk to you about 1 Corinthians the 9th chapter verses 19 through 23 where the Apostle Paul says that unto the Jews I became a Jew that I might gain the Jews and so on to them who are under the law as under the law that I might gain those who are under the law. And many people take this to mean that the Apostle Paul that the reason he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day is not because he went to celebrate the Sabbath, but because he became, as a Jew, he went into the synagogue so he might gain people for Christ and that he really didn't keep the law of God. Many people take these scriptures to mean that the Apostle Paul didn't keep the law of God. He just adopted to the Gentiles, the Jews, that so they may gain uh, them for the church of God and that he didn't keep the law of God. Well, let's go through this. I want to read you maybe, I want to read you first a couple of uh, sources that interpret what these texts mean, what they feel these texts mean. Uh, the People's New Testament says, with Jews he lived as a Jew in order to reach them. He observed their distinctions of meats and kept feasts and circumcised Timothy. He observed the law to reach those who kept the law. So that was his motivation to keep the law, was to reach those who kept the law. Because they say this because they think the Apostle Paul said that God's law is done away. And it's simply not the case. You cannot find that in the Bible. In the end of this, we'll show you a couple of scriptures where the Apostle Paul did keep the law of God. And not to gain people for Christ, but for his salvation. But if you notice in this uh, source, the People's New Testament, they make it seem like that the Apostle Paul was kind of ignorant of his own culture. Notice how they put it. He observed their, dis their distinctions of meats and kept feasts and circumcised Timothy. They make it sound like he was ignorant of his own culture. He knew about the law of God. He knew about the feast days. He knew about everything that the Jews, the, he knew everything about Jewish culture, but they make it sound like the Apostle Paul didn't know any of these things. Anyways, the next article says this, Paul acted like something he was not. Some people might call that hypocritical or deceptive, but uh, Paul calls it a part of his evangelistic strategy. For someone to act like a Gentile, they would eat they would eat foods that Jews could not, and they would not observe the Sabbath. So implying that the Apostle Paul would eat unclean foods and uh, not observe the Sabbath, live like Gentiles so he might gain people for Christ. When Paul was with the Jews, he kept the Old Covenant food laws and weekly and annual Sabbaths. When he was with the Gentiles, he did not. He sometimes acted differently from what he believed. So that's their explanation of what these, uh, these scriptures mean. You're telling me that the Apostle Paul would deliberately sin to gain people for Christ. So if he's living with the Gentiles, he would go into pagan temples and pray to pagan gods so he could win people for Christ? Is that what it's saying? Well, let's go through this from the Bible, and we must remember that context is key, and we'll see something totally different from what these people are proposing. Now, notice in 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse 18. Let's start in verse 18. It says, What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge. So he's not charging people for the gospel message, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. The Apostle Paul was a powerful figure in the church of God, and he said he was not going to abuse his power in the gospel. He was one of the leaders of that church. Now, in verse 19, it says, For though I be free from all men, Yet have I made myself a servant unto all, that I might gain the more. There is the context. He becomes a servant that he may gain the more. Because then he goes on to say, as a, as a Jew, I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. So there's the context. The context is, he made himself a servant unto all, 
Jews, people who are under the, under, the, uh, under the law, people who are without the law, people who are weak. He became a servant unto all of these people. That's the context, and we must remember that when we go through these scriptures. Now, the Apostle Paul is actually doing what Christ said to do when it comes to the church, when it gets organized after the resurrection of Christ. The, uh, the, uh, Jesus Christ said this in Matthew the 20th chapter, verse 25 and 28, and you can also read it in Matthew 23, 10 through 11. Christ said this, Know ye not that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, that they that are great exercise authority upon them, but it shall not so be among you. Whosoever will be great among you will be, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to, not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life as a ransom for many. So here we see that the Apostle Paul is basically obeying what Christ said to do, that here is a powerful figure in the church of God, the Apostle Paul, and a leader in an organization that was rocking the planet at that time, and he has become a servant, a leader becoming a servant to all these people, Jews, Gentiles, under the law, weak, and so on. Becoming a servant to all these people, and his conduct of becoming that servant would win followers for Christ. And that's the whole reason powerful people become servants, because people will become curious. Why is this person acting this way? Why is he conducting himself the way he is? Become curious, and then you can be a witness for Jesus Christ of Nazareth and gain followers. The Apostle Peter said the same thing in uh, 1 Peter, the third chapter, talking about wives who are believers and their husbands were non-believers. He says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection. Here is that subjection, becoming a servant to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, meaning the husbands, they also may, without the word, be one. That's the word one is the same Greek word the Apostle Paul is using here for gain. Be one by the conversation, and that word, if you look at the margin, means conduct or behavior, by the conversation of the wives. So by their, the wives' conduct, if they have an unbelieving husband, the way they conduct themselves and live the way Christ wants them to live without sin, not according to what these people say, that the Apostle Paul would live as Gentiles, sinning, that he might gain followers for Christ. That's a lot of nonsense. It's not what it's saying. Pa Apostle Paul and the wives and so on become servants to their husbands, to all these people, Jews and people under the law and so on, they become servants, humble, people become curious, and then the Christians can witness to their husbands or Jews and so on why they act this way, that they may gain people or win people for Christ. So that is the context of being a servant to all. Then he lists all these people that he becomes servants too. And notice what it says here in the Barnes notes. It says, in this verse, the verse I'm, that I'm going to quote to you, verse 12, 20, it says, in this verse, it says, and to the following, and to, and the two following, rather, the two other verses following, Paul states more at length the conduct which he, he had exhibited and to which he refers in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19, that he had shown this conduct to all classes of people. That is the context. All these classes of people, he has become a servant. That's from Barnes. Now, let's go into verse 20. He's become a servant to all. Then he says, and, and the Greek word is chi, should read, therefore, Therefore, unto the Jews, I became as a Jew. Now, 
How does the Apostle Paul become a Jew when he's already a Jew? When you look at the book of Acts, uh, Acts the, uh, the 23rd chapter, Acts the 21st chapter, rather, verse 39, and Acts 22, 3, the Apostle Paul says that he is a Jew, a Jew of Tarshish. He's already a Jew. How does he become as a Jew? As he says here, I became as a Jew when he's already a Jew. It says here, I'm a Jew of Tarshish. Now, what about religion? Well, religion, he was a Jew as well. Notice what it says here in Acts 23, chapter, verse 6. He says, I am a Pharisee, son of a Pharisee, in the hope of the resurrection of the dead. The Apostle Paul was a Jew. The Church of God in the first century, they didn't look at their religion as a new religion. They were Jews practicing the Jewish religion of the Old Testament. The only difference was is that the uh, Jews in the church, now you read of in the Bible, the sect of the Sadducees and so on, the church in Acts the in Acts, the 24th chapter, verse 5, was looked upon as just another sect of the Jews. They were called the sect of the Nazarenes. It was just another Jewish sect. And so they didn't look upon themselves as a new religion. It was the religion of the Jews. The only difference was is that they believed that Jesus was the Messiah, died for the sins of the world, became the ultimate sacrifice, and they didn't believe in the man-made regulations that other Jewish sects were practicing, but they were still Jews. And the Apostle Paul says, I am a Pharisee. And in Acts the 15th chapter, verse 5, we see Pharisees in the church. It says, Pharisees who believed. So these are Jews practicing the Jewish faith, but they believed in the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So Paul say, saying here, I became as a Jew. How can Paul become as a Jew when he was a Jew, nationally and religiously. It just doesn't make sense when you look at these interpretations of these passages here from, the, from these sources. It just doesn't make any sense. Now, it says here, Therefore unto the Jews I became as a Jew. Now, when I look at all these translations, you know, they're trying to translate the text and so on. The closest one I got to the best one I got to was the Jewish New Testament, where it says that he became in position of, in a position of a Jew. But the context is a servant. And so it should read in a position of a Jew's servant. That's the context. So he became a Jew's servant. And at that time, the Jews had servants. When you look at this source here, the Jewish people in the first century, page 751, it says a male or female servant belonging to a Jewish family were personal servants at that time for the men, for the man or the woman of the house. So here is a powerful leader of a sect, of a Jewish sect called the sect of the Nazarenes, who was a Jew and he became a servant to the Jews, and this is what it means here, that as a Jew, I, be, uh, I became as a Jew's servant, in a position of a Jew's servant, that I may gain the Jews, like the Apostle Peter says here, to subject yourselves to unbelievers, that you might win, that uh, you might win those people to Christ, that wives might win their husbands to Christ. The Apostle Paul is winning people for Christ, becoming a servant to them, as Jesus Christ told his church to do, that those who are great in the church should become ministers. And he became a servant to Jews that he might gain people for Christ. He became a servant, and he didn't sin. He didn't take part in uh, man-made uh, man-made uh, religion, and so on. He just became their servant, conducted himself in a Christian way. People seeing his powerful position, becoming a servant, people becoming curious, 
as to why he's conducting himself the way he is, testifies, gives a testimony for Christ, and wins converts for Christ. And that's what this means. Now, it says, to them that are under the law, as under the law. Who are those who are under the law? When you look at Romans, the sixth chapter, now we did a video on this, going into detail of what it means to be under the law and under grace. And we show you in Romans, the sixth chapter, verse 14, that those who are under the law are those who have dominion, uh, sin having dominion over them. And that the Apostle Paul talked about two laws, the law of God and the law of sin. And when you look at Romans, the third chapter, verses 9 through, through 19, it lists a whole bunch of sins, and it says that the law states these sins, and it's for those who are under the law, and that those who are under the law are guilty before God. And Romans, the third chapter, verse 9, talks about Jew and Gentile, and it says that those are all under sin. So under the law means those who are under the law of sin. Jew or Gentile, people who are sinning in the sight of Almighty God. He became their servants. Now, most people, when you look at religious people today, people who dress in weird clothing, they got their collars turned around backwards, and so on, and they have high positions in the church, you think they would become a servant to sinners, that they might gain people for Christ? Absolutely not. They wouldn't do something like that, but Jesus Christ told us to do that, to be servants, even though we were leaders. And the Apostle Paul says here that he is a leader in the church, but he became a servant to sinners, Jew or Gentile. He became a servant to those who are under the law of sin, that he might gain them who are under the law of sin. Mean, under the law means under the law of sin, not the law of God. And then it goes on like that. To the weak, he became as weak. Those are people who are weak in faith, and so on, that he may gain the weak, and so on. So it means that all these people, those who are without the law, those who are weak, those who are Jewish, he became their servants, even though he was a powerful figure, that he might gain people for Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, the Apostle Paul, he kept the law of God. This is the way he conducted himself. This is the way he lived his life. Let me just quote to you Acts, the 24th chapter, verse 14. He says, But this I confess unto you, that after the way which they call hearsay, so worship I the God of my fathers. So here is the Apostle Paul's system of, of worship, of how he worshiped Almighty God, believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. The Apostle Paul kept the law of God and he worshiped Almighty God in that way, through the law of God. Notice what it says here in Romans 7, verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. And then he says, so, I th so thank God I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God. The Apostle Paul lived according to the laws of Almighty God. He wouldn't go out and live like a Gentile and live like a Gentile and sin. He'd be a hypocrite, wouldn't he? living like a Gentile to gain people for Christ, sinning, yet telling the church not to sin and that he keeps the law of God. That is total, that, that would make Paul a hypocrite. And that's what some of these people in some of these sources are suggesting, that the Apostle Paul is a hypocrite. And that's because they just don't understand the context of those scriptures. I want to show you one more scripture in 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. And pretty much this chapter talks about salvation and your calling of Almighty God. And he says in verse 19, it talks about circumcision. And it says here, circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing when it comes to salvation. Circumcision was a sacrifice for sin, as 
the book of Hebrews says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And, sac and circumcision was for the remission of sins. It was a sacrifice. But now we have the circumcision of Christ, a superior sacrifice for the remission of sins, which is the sacrifice, the shedding of blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is our circumcision, circumcision for salvation from sin. So the Apostle Paul says here, for the context is for salvation, circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing for salvation. Then he says, but the keeping of the commandments of God. That's what matters for salvation. And he's, this is the same statement as uh, what Jesus Christ told the rich young ruler in Matthew, the 19th chapter, verse 17, when he told them, he asked them, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus Christ said, if you are to enter into life, keep the commandments. And the Apostle Paul is saying the same thing here. Keeping the commandments of God, that's what matters for salvation. So to say that these scriptures in 1 Corinthians 9th chapter proves that the Apostle Paul didn't keep the law of God is just another Bible misconception.